My next guest makes his UFC debut on April 14th at UFC on Fox 29. He's going to be taking on Gilbert Burns on short notice. It is Dan Moret. Who's the first person you told once you found out the news? Uh, I called my father. Oh, first guy awesome. From, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, he's been there the whole time for me, supported me a ton. Uh, his basement back in Minnesota is literally a gym. Half of it's matted as a... About 20 heavy bags hanging up in there and, and, and mats the whole way around. The other half of it is rubber flooring and weights and everything like that. He's let me do that for, uh, it's been like that for almost 10 years in different configurations over the years. But, you know, uh, he let me stay there in my, you know, mid-20s. Let me live at his house, punch heavy bags till 3 in the morning and never said a word to me about it. Uh, supported me 100% in this. So, you know, he was the first one I called. Um, told him, called my mother after that. And then... Uh, John Crouch, um, shortly after that, called Coach. And uh, Alden told me the same thing. It's like, isn't it dark there, like late? So I said, get off that freaking mountain and don't hurt yourself. So I said, oh, I'm going to spend a little time up here and enjoy myself. You know, I got, I got a, a couple more minutes and I got a headlamp, so I'll be all right. And, you know, how important is good management? You know, we've seen with the Reebok deal a lot of people saying, oh, you don't need a manager. But in, in a case like yours, especially where, you know, you, you're getting these calls and you're having those hookups where it's like, you know, you're, you're in the loop as far as, uh, you know, short notice fights. How, how essential is that as a fighter? I think, I mean, it's really everything. Um, you know, I've only ever had two managers. Both of them are good. I, I love my first manager. He's from, from back in Minnesota. He did a ton of great things for me. He got me into the, the RFA and, and fighting for LFA. And I was in those title uh, contention and, and getting those fights. And did all the right things for me, but there was just a time in my life where I, I made some decisions and I needed to make some some different moves. I had been coming down here to Arizona doing training camps and things like that, and I kind of thought like this needs to be more of a full time thing. So I went a different way with management as well. At the same time, you know, it wasn't anything like that he did or didn't do, but um, you know, I need I knew I needed um, an elite level training camp and an, an elite manager. And I feel like there's there's four or five of those uh, guys or companies that really are the ones that, hey, when there's, when there's calls and there's opportunities, these are the ones that they're getting a hold of. These are the guys first. And there are so many people, especially at 155 pounds, where the fourth manager on the list isn't going to get to the call. One of those first three guys is going to have somebody. There's always going to be somebody ready to take that fight. So you have to be with one of those guys. Um, you know, and, and I knew that uh, I talked to a couple of them. And, uh, you know, Danny Rubenstein, I, I really felt like I connected with. Um, you know, he's been, he's been really good and he's, he's, I felt like he, he was the right match for me, you know, and, and he's been a, a great guy and he got me the opportunity. So, you know, that's, that's been key. He's like, Hey, I'm, I'm at the right gym. I have the right management. I'm, I'm surrounding myself with around the right people because, you know, as the sport is, you can win all the fights and then do all the right things. But if you don't know the right people and you're not in the right position in the right place, at the right time, you might not get the opportunity. So you have to really commit and set yourself up in all those areas to, to get into the UFC and, that's what I did, and it paid off. It was, uh, you know, a risk and a gamble. Like last year, a lot of things changed in my life, and and now we're at this point, and it's like, hey, you know, I did all those things, and it was, you know, nobody really saw, you know, what's what's going to happen from that. And I had a vision of it. I thought this is the things I need to do. These are hard choices I have to make. I made them, and and here I am. And uh, Minnesota will always be home for you. Uh, you know, we, we talked about that off air, but now you live in Arizona. You're wearing the MMA lab shirt. I know you're there full time now. Um, what, what sort of, uh, you know, prompted that as far as moving down there? And, and was that sort of with Danny's help as well? Because I know Danny manages a lot of fighters at the lab. Um, yeah, I mean, it had something to do with Danny. But really, I mean, when I first came down here, I was uh, reconnected with my now roommate, uh, Johnny Hollywood Case, fellow UFC 155er. Um, you know, he and I have gone way back. We fought on the local circuit, uh, Minnesota, Iowa, kind of seen um, like eight, ten years ago. Um, had reconnected, and, and he lived down here and, and had moved to a couple different camps and really found home when I came down and he ended up at the lab. Uh, I really felt like I connected with it. Um, well, just as soon as I was here and I, I talked to uh, John Crouch, I was like, this is the kind of a guy. He, he falls in the same mold as, uh, the mold as my other coach, Greg Nelson. It was like, he's more than a coach to me. This guy really cares. He, he cares about you personally. He doesn't just care about, oh, is this guy going to give me a check or, or can, what can he do for my team? Is What can I do for him? You know, he really cares about all the people and individuals. I connected with him a ton, um, and, and I just felt like, you know, this is this is a place I can be. I felt really solid with the team, the program they have. Everything's in position, um, and, and so I was – I really liked it, and I wanted to be part of it, and then it came uh, – kind of came full circle with my, my second job outside of uh, fighting is – I work with Zebra Mats, um, the largest martial arts gym outfit in the world. They based out of Minnesota. They had a, a deal going to build a, the new MMA lab, so it kind of worked out. Like, hey, I'm already down there training. 
you guys are doing this deal with them and, and make those connections. Like I can, I can help with the design, the layout, do, do the whole thing. They pretty much had all that how they wanted it, and they just like uh, you can do the install and everything on it and put the place together. I said, yeah, for sure I can. You know, so over the last couple months we've worked real hard to uh, to build a, a new uh, facility for them, a world class state of the art facility to match the level of the coaching and the talent that's here. Now we have a world class brand new facility to go with it. Um, so, you know, we're, we're definitely, we're already one of those elite teams and now we feel like we're at the top of that with the, the facility being right on par with the individuals that are there and the personnel. So it all kind of came together. It's like, you know, uh, with the job having that, hey, we can get you down there. I can afford to pay, get an apartment and do the things. It's like, all right, perfect. Like it, it all just kind of fit and made sense. And then, uh, you know, if the fight falls in your lap and you say, you know, that's, that's why you take these risks and you do that kind of stuff and everything just sort of fell into place. Let's talk about your opponent, Gilbert Burns, 12-2 and record, very well-versed on the mat especially. How do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? You know, he's obviously a super tough guy, but that's what you want. That's that's the kind of thing you, you fight for. That's what you've been training for for 10 years is to fight world-class competition. That's the guy I want to fight. Um, you know, he, he I feel like I match up well with him. I'm a tall, left-handed guy. Um, you know, he's, he's a little shorter. He's obviously uh, world-class on the mat, but he's a world-class fighter too. He's got good hands. He trains with an elite camp down there. He's getting better. Um, he's dangerous everywhere, but I feel like I'm the guy that can beat him. Like I have the tools and some some sneaky stuff, and and what I've been working on, and and the way I've improved down here at the lab. There's ways I can beat him. I, I feel like I can catch him. I can hurt him. And you know, I, I feel like in an MMA fight, my jujitsu can hang with a lot of people. Obviously, he's world class, and that's a, a different level as far as jujitsu goes. But we're not doing just jujitsu. We're in an MMA fight. So I do some of the right things. It's like there's there's nothing that says I can't catch him and, and put him in something and put him to sleep too. So. Uh, you know, I feel really good about it. I'm excited. I, I don't feel like, you know, all the pressure's on him. It's like, oh, you're taking on this new guy. You've had eight fights, seven fights in the UFC already. All this hype's around you. And, and I just get to come in and have a fight. Like, I, I'm already in shape. I've been helping with people with their camps. I'm always in camp. I'm ready to go. I feel fresh. I feel great at 155 pounds. Um, you know, I know he's a big 55er. He's going to have a, a big weight cut to get down to there. I'm going to feel perfect, ready to go, and push the pace for 15 minutes and just get after him, and I feel super excited about it. You mentioned the weight cut for him. Uh, he had his last fight canceled because uh, the commission felt that he was cutting too much weight. Um, are you worried about that at all heading into this matchup, that he might not make weight and you could have another, you know, they could have a similar situation? You know, it's always a, a slight concern with having that, that issue in the past, but I, you know, he knew this fight was coming up, so I feel like he should be ready. He'll make it, you know what I mean? Um, I certainly hope so. Uh, come in on weight. If he wants to, you know, especially the fight week, make it at least through fight week. If you want to be a couple pounds heavy uh, on fight day, you can give me that money. I'm cool with that. You can be a couple pounds heavier than me because, uh, you know, it's a little different now. Um, 20% of somebody's purse before a couple hundred bucks. Well, I'd rather they yeah, cut it's, weight. It's a big now, difference, yeah. Yeah, now if I'm getting, uh, you know, a few thousand dollars extra, it's like, oh, he can be a couple pounds heavy. He's going to be bigger than me anyways. I don't care. That's fine. If you want to be a little bit heavy, you go ahead. So, uh, yeah, as long as we can, as long as we get a fight, I don't care what he weighs. As long as the commission lets us fight, then I'm in. And how's your weight cut going? Uh, you, you know, you said you were ready for a fight before. I imagine you were keeping the weight low just in case something like this happened. Yeah, yeah, I'm right on track. It's perfect. I could make it. I could have made it this week. I could have made it last week. So I'm always right there. Uh, 155 is is awesome for me. Like that, I always eat clean and, and healthy. So I'm within reach at all times. Um, you know, I stay up, you know, high 170s, but I can get down fairly easy uh, just with the routine I have and what I do um, you know with making 145 pounds eight times I kind of had it down literally I had everything written down and documented and it was down to a science of what I ate when and why how the training all that stuff um, so I've been able to just to to amplify all this, the things I already did and just and push it further and harder at 155 pounds and, and I feel great there like I could always make the weight and that's that was part of it. I knew like, hey, if I, before when I was close and I was on that short list at 145, I was like, man, I got to really kill myself at all times. I got to keep that weight low enough where I can make it on a short notice. And it was a lot harder. Now I can train full speed at all times and say, hey, I can make this weight in 10 days if you, if you need a guy. So uh, I feel great. The weight cut will be easy for me. No problem. So I'm training full speed and ready to go. And who's going to be in your corner for this fight? Uh, my teammate, uh, roommate, Johnny Hollywood Case will be there. Uh, John Crouch and then um, boxing coach Alan from uh, the MMA lab as well. 
um, just an awesome team. I've been working with a ton with him. It's it's great to have him in there too. Um, you know, we got our striking coach Eddie Childer, but we have uh, just an awesome team of a well-rounded group. So you can work on all the areas. You know, not just striking, but different aspects of striking. Now that we've got just strict boxing and stuff there too, and uh, you know, it's he's helped me a ton. Just work on on my form, my simple things, and, and just getting back to being very strong with the basics. I got a good frame for this weight class. I got good skills and different things. It's just doing the right stuff, being in the right position at the right time. And that'll be key in this fight is just staying in the right position um, and, and being able to attack when the opportunities are there. And how do you see this fight unfolding on April 14th? Uh, I think it's going to be a barn burner. You know, he's going to want to come and, and get this job done. He doesn't want to be in there for very long with me, I don't think. And uh, I'm going to come to push the pace. Uh, I'm coming to, to get after it. You know, this is something I've been working at for 10 years, and I ain't going to hang back and and just sit there and then hope to get to the end of it. You know what I mean? I'm coming for him. Uh, I'm super excited about it. I want to put it on him. I'm ready to show up and show out, get the get the win and get it in a devastating fashion. He He's a guy who I, I think if he, him and uh, Venado were supposed to fight, I think the winner of that probably is ranked. Um, so I feel like it, with a big win over him, I'm right there. I'm in with the top 20 guys in the world. And the work I've put in gets me to, to jump the list a little bit. I get a shortcut some of these guys get up to fighting the people I want to fight. You know, I'm, I'm willing to test myself against any of the guys in the UFC, but uh, to be able to get up and, and kind of short, shortcut a bunch of the guys, people I've heard, it's like, I want to fight the people that I've seen fight. I want to fight the people that people, that, you know, that those are the guys you, you look at and other fans are like, that's that's a big matchup. I know who that is. Like, I want to fight those kind of guys. That's that's the goal. Do you feel like the timing of this is good with the fact that Martin Campman retired a couple of years ago and now you'll be the only hitman in the UFC? It's great. <laughs> Pretty rare, right, with a name like that. You know, hitman, pitbull, these kind of things. It's, it's there. Uh, you know, luck, luckily enough, that really didn't come from fighting. I didn't make it up myself. It was before that. I've had it for a while. It works with my name, I guess. Uh, you know, Dan and man sort of rhymes together. But, um, yeah, if I can be the only one and if I can – they put a name on the list – and uh, I take him out. That's if, if the, the April fourteenth. I get approved. Like, all right, that's hitman thing fits, and, and we'll accept it. We'll take it. The fans will like it. I think. Are you watching any TV right now? Any Netflix? Anything getting you through training camp right now? Yeah, a bunch of Gilbert Burns videos on uh, Fight Pass. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, you know, I, I watch. Uh, I don't even really watch TV much, so it's mostly Amazon Prime or, or Netflix stuff. Uh, I just ran through Entourage a little while ago, uh, but mostly, it's, you know, it's it's. I try to stay off of that stuff as much as I can. I'll catch myself sitting in front of a screen too long. So if it's not study time and homework on fights and different things like that, I'll try to be in a book or, or doing some uh, physical therapy stuff or something a little more productive than staring at the screen all day long. So, um, you know, uh, a couple of things on, on Netflix or, or Amazon, but then otherwise it's just, man, it's fight pass. Yeah, it's down to business. Well, uh, Dan, again, congratulations on this fight. Uh, you know, you and I have been doing interviews for a couple of years now, and it's cool to see you finally make the big leagues in the UFC. Uh, just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media, and if you got any sponsors or shout-outs, the floor is yours. Man, uh, Instagram mostly. I guess i got to get back on the Twitter thing a little bit more. Uh, Instagram is uh, Hitman Moret. Um, Twitter is uh, at Dan Hitman. Um, man, I just, uh, honestly, I'd like to thank all the people who got me here. You know, obviously the people at the MMA lab and coach Crouch, the guys before that, Greg Nelson, everyone at the Minnesota martial arts Academy. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't there. He, he got me there. Um, my original coaches, Ray White, and Dave Costas, those guys back in Mankato, Minnesota, they, they kind of set the standard for me of what coaches and, and, and people that you surround yourself with uh, and martial arts is about. They set the standard for me for that, and I've kept that high expectation, and that's why I'm, I'm at where I'm at and with the coaches I'm with. Um, those guys, sponsor Zebra Mats, uh, who I work for, sponsor me, help me out a ton, Powerlift Equipment, Gamma Labs, and, and, and uh, all those guys, Garden of Life, they help me, keep me clean on the USADA list now that I have to worry about that. So glad I got some clean goods uh, supplement companies and things like that can, can keep me healthy. So all those people, friends and family that have been with me since day one, everybody back in Mankato, Minnesota, uh, you know, they're behind me and, and it means a lot for me to, to step in there and represent them on April 14th. What's up, Fight Fans? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to see even more interviews with your favorite UFC and Bellator fighters. We've also got coverage at events, including post-fight press conferences and media scrums. And if you like this video, check out the video to my right. It's worth your time.